Hi, I'm Nick and this is the TBT channel. Welcome to tonight's video. Now, this one is a bit techy and it's a bit talky. So, bear with me, it's gonna be me doing it. So there's gonna be various backtrackings, adding ins and oh, I forgot to tell you this part. I'm sorry about that in advance, but you know what these videos are usually like. So, here's the thing. Up until a few years ago, TBT always supplied our spring kits, a kit that included a spring, with the spring at its full length, okay? The most that would fit in the gun, and it was down to the customer to fit it, test it, reduce the spring to the power. Now, that's great, and that's wonderful, and I honestly believe that is still the best way to do this. But more and more people were saying, I don't want to cut a spring. Now I've done videos on cutting springs and it takes me less time and it will take you less time to cut and compress and finish a spring than it would take for me to describe how you do it. But a lot of people still don't want to do it. So we started to supply our springs in different lengths. And that is brilliant for 90% of people. But because of the variability of air rifles, you can have three identical air rifles in the identical caliber with identical pellets fit an identical tbt kit to them and you will get three completely different results that is just the way of it um, so by supplying for example in a maxi pro kit by supplying a spring that gives 10 and a half to 11 foot pounds in 90 percent of guns that means five percent of guns are going to be lower 5% of guns are gonna be higher. When it's higher, that isn't necessarily an issue because we just go back to the, just take half a coil off, flatten it, refinish the spring, jobs are good and I still get that, oh, I don't wanna do that. It is part and parcel of tuning a gun. Sometimes it may be necessary to reduce the spring to stay legal. If you're in a country where legality doesn't matter, that's great. In the UK, we have to stick to the rules. So, today, we're gonna be dealing effectively with the 5% who come back and say, my power's a little bit low. Now, the easy answer is, I'll send you a longer spring. You know, you got a 31 coil there with that kit, I'll send you the 34. You get a 29 with that kit, I'll send you the 31. But that isn't going to address the problem. And we're gonna look in more detail at the main reason for not getting power. Um, and it's, it's more complicated than you might first think. So we're gonna be going into the darker arts of spring rifle tuning, balancing piston weights, um, spring slam, spring uh, piston sl uh, slam and piston bounce, that kind of thing. Now, Having said that, if you fit your kit and it gives you the power you want with the pellet you want straight away and feels good, leave it alone. Don't take it apart, don't start mucking about with it. But for those of you who come to me and say, for example, I've had uh, one this week, I, I, I fitted a Maxi Pro kit, my gun's only doing nine foot pounds. Okay, well what, what pellet's that with? So they told me, so, well what other pellets have you tried? I don't know if you saw the um, the cautionary tale 12 foot pounds video. I think that's the most watched video I've done in the last six months. If you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. Might even put a link below if I remember. I've been doing a series of tests over chronos with different pellets to show with a, with a, a spring rifle, especially, that a lighter pellet gives you a higher power than a heavier pellet. But one of the things we did find, I think it was with JSBs, and Air Arms Exacts, although they look identical and they're identical weights, there's a one foot pound difference between them because of the composition of the alloy. So finding powers with different pellets is gonna help you. And that is what we need to do if your spring rifle is shooting below where you expect it to be. Now, first of all, I will say straight off, this is almost always a 177 issue, 
okay? 177 is less efficient than 22. Sorry to you 177 shooters who think it's some kind of magic elixir, it isn't. It's simple physics, 177 flies straighter, you don't have to judge the distances. Well, that's great, but it will always be less efficient, which is why you need more preload or spring, usually in a spring rifle, and you get a lower shot count, usually in a PCP. To give you a graphic demonstration of this, <laughs> and this was a struggle. What a day and age we live in where we can't find bloody drinking straws. What's going on? <laughs> I've got two drinking straws here. I've got a cardboard one with quite a wide bore. I would liken that to the old fashioned McDonald's straw. Then I've got a metal one. You can't get plastic ones anymore. Our daughter drinks through a straw because she can't hold a baker and she'd throw it everywhere. So she has straws. And we have a thin straw here. Now, if you have two straws at home, you can do this experiment. You'll like it, it'll be fun. Get your thin straw, take a deep breath, and then try and blow it out, all out as fast as you can through this one. <coughs> Excuse me, I do have a bit of a cough at the moment. You see, it's quite a bit of effort because you're trying to force it through a small hole with a larger one. That's your 2-2, two -two, that's your 177. You're trying to force the air down a small hole versus a large hole. That one's easier, that one's more difficult. And what that's going to do, in effect, if you now imagine this is at the front of our compression tube with the piston coming up here, it's going to come firing down here with the spring behind it, and it builds up a cushion of air here. Literally a cushion of air. But if it reaches a certain point of pressure, it overcomes the tension from the spring, and you get piston bounce. The piston will bounce back up the compression tube. So. With a one, uh, with a two-two, with the larger bore for it to put the air down, there's more air going through into the barrel. It's less likely to happen, but I will say it happens in every case, unless something's very wrong. You always get a small amount of it, but this is able. The, the cushion of air is less dense. It starts lower down, so bang, brilliant. With your one seven seven small bore, it might get to here. Oh, it's too much. Gone back up and get down again. Oh, it's too much, and it goes back again. That is called piston bounce. The alternative to piston bounce is piston slam, which is where the hole here is too big. This is why some, sometimes people say, oh, I want to expand the transfer port on my um, Springer. In some cases that can be good, but it isn't like a PCP where expanding the transfer port will increase power. If you expand it too much, that goes smacking into the end there. You haven't built up any pressure inside the compression tube. It just pushes the pellet down at lower speed. It doesn't work. Likewise, there's a trend at the moment for lightning pistons. You know, I've got a special lightweight unobtainium piston that hardly weighs anything and you can not feel the recoil and all that, blah, blah, blah. That's great and it can work really well if everything's balanced out. But usually, to compensate for a lighter piston, you have to enlarge the transfer port. And in my mind, quite often, it involves quite a lot of work just to get it to the same point where it felt when it was standard. But anyway, that's by the by. So, we are looking at, or for, we're looking for piston bounce. Usually, in a 177, where it's going to doing back there and back again. It happens a number of times, but in this case, we're just going to concentrate on the two. So how do we tell if our piston is bouncing? Now, the trick to this is to test a number of pellets. And that's it. Test a number of pellets, lightweight, medium weight, medium heavy, and heavy, okay? We would expect every time the heavy to be slightly less efficient than the lightweight, okay? It's, it's just normal, that's just physics. If you do get a situation where the heavy is more powerful than lightweight, you've got piston slam, which is a different video. If we have a significant amount of people who are saying, I've got piston slam, I don't come across it much from this end talking to you. But if there are a lot of people who are worried about piston slam, either I'll do a video on it or contact me, we'll go through that. But piston bounce is the thing. So you've tested, for example, let's say, Hobbies, Superdomes, 
Air Arms 16 grade. Oh no, of course they'd be 8.4s, wouldn't they? In 170. I don't know. I don't even know 177 bullets, but light, medium, and heavy. And you get a big, you know, like plus one foot pound difference between the lightest and the heaviest. You've got piston bounce. And there are two ways of getting over piston bounce. First of all, you can add preload. Now, the preload can be the little preload washers that come with the kit. But in 177, especially on a short stroked kit, that might not do it because you're dealing with a smaller capacity of air. So what we're after doing, the preload would put more pressure behind the piston as it comes down onto that cushion of air, forcing it down further before it bounces up again. But what we actually need to do is increase the mass of the piston. Now, with the Virarchs especially, in all the videos, I tell you, if you find weights and washers inside of the piston, remove them. That is still the correct thing to do. But I've always also said, put them to one side if you need them. And that is all, all, also always the correct thing to do. What I don't think I ever did would explain on video why you keep them. So we've got a TX with a, a TBT short stroke extension here, which coincidentally also converts to a 25 millimeter Virox here at the same time. So we're coming down here, the piston's coming down here in our 177, it's meeting the cushion of air, it's bouncing back, and we're just not getting the power. Adding the preload isn't getting the power. What do we do? We need to add combined preload and mass to our piston. And that's simply done with an M10 steel washer. Simple as that. Now. An M10 nylon washer comes in our kits. That's what we call our slip washer. That's for the top hat to sit on and to spin on. It gives it a friction-free, smooth base for it to spin because the springs twist and untwist as they compress and expand. But there's no mass to that. Oh, yeah, there is obviously is mass to everything, even light. But there's very little mass to that. So if we're experiencing piston bounce, what I would recommend is a steel M10 washer. And you simply put that in your piston ahead of your slip washer. So it's giving us a few grams of mass inside of the piston and simultaneously giving us dun, dun, two millimeters of preload. So that one steel washer in some cases could give us one foot pound of extra energy simply by helping to overcome that cushion of air. I've never supplied steel M10 washers in our kits because about 5% of people need them. 5%, right? The other 95% would receive that in the box and say, What's that for? And they'd be on the phone, what's that for? Or emails, what's that for? Or they'd just put it in there anyway and creating piston sand. And basically all kinds of trouble ensues. M10 steel washers are the kind of thing, you know, we've all got a junk drawer in the kitchen. If you go to the back of that drawer underneath the old lighters with no flint in them, you will find a number of these. They're, they're pennies. I'm toying with the idea of putting them in the Maxi Pro kits but I've got a feeling for the 5% of people who need them, it's gonna create issues for the other 95%. Do you, do you get where I'm coming from with that? It's like, I could put it in a little little bag with red writing on it saying, don't use these. But uh, no, I, I think M10 steel washers is the kind of thing that just about all of us, we've got a shed. We've all got sheds, haven't we? We've all got tools, we've got these. But that's what you need. So a couple of those in the front there, depends what power it's at but each one of those can give you up to one foot pound in the case of piston bounce. But there is a secondary thing what we need to do if we are putting that in front of there. Does anybody know, does anybody remember, have you been paying attention in previous videos? Our plastic that we supply is made to fit the particular gun that you've ordered a kit for. The rear guides in particular are in different lengths. Now. They are designed that when we put our slip washer, top hat and rear guide into the piston without a spring, that sits on the skirt of the piston. See that? 
sitting on the skirt of the piston there, that's great. But if we start introducing these, we're reducing the spring room inside of the piston. So that could end up with a situation where if you were to put it inside of the gun without the spring, that would happen, or a variation on that. That's kind of so you can see it, but it would only have to be sticking up three millimeters from there and the gun wouldn't cock. So that's another reason we don't put those in the box. You need to check, if you're gonna introduce one of these into the piston, you then need to put the plastic, all of the plastic into the piston to make sure that the rear guide still sits flush on the piston skirt. If it doesn't, the gun won't cock. And I think that's it. That's piston bounce. Creating a cushion of air so hard, so highly pressurized that the mass and movement of the piston can't overcome it. And it bounces back. As I say, it happens in every case, even two twos, even where we get what we call slam. Usually there's a bit of bounce, unless there's no piston seal on the end of the gun there is some bounce beforehand but it, you can feel the slam you know we're after a comfortable shooting experience while making the power we want so m10 steel washers now i know i'm still going to get phone calls and emails every day week month whatever on this subject and that's fine that's what i'm here for never ever think twice about picking up the phone to speak to me or send me an email this video, in part, is here for me to link to when people say, I fitted one of your Maxi Pro kits and it's only doing 10.2 foot-pounds with both preload washers. What should I do? Take the preload washers out, replace them with these, test it again, call me back. Overpowered, because the other 5%, 90% of you, absolutely bob on first time. 5% of you, this video's for you. 5% of you, I fitted a Maxi Pro kit and it's overpowered. The only If you're past the dieseling stage, i.e. the first 50 shots have already gone, then the only way to reduce that is to reduce the spring. In 90% of cases, it was right. In 5% of cases, it was low. In your case, those 5%, it's a little high. Um, the good news, if your air rifle is overpowered, is your air rifle in particular is a very efficient one. So that's the good news. The second part of good news is reducing a spring is an awful lot easier than to keep stripping the gun down and trying to balance the preload and the, and the, and the piston bounce. But having said that, if it's a TX200, it's a five minute job because it's such an easy gun to strip. That's it. It was a talky one. It was a techie one. I hope you get something from that, balancing the power, checking with pellets to see if you've got slam or bounce and settling your gun in that ideal 10 and a half to 11 foot pound spot, which is where you really want it. Please like, subscribe, hit notifications. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.